Hello, I'm Christina Masida Strassfield, the Museum Director and Chief Curator here at Guildhall Museum in East Hampton. I want to welcome you today to our Woodhouse Gallery to the exhibition of Cornelia Foss's work. She's best known for her landscapes of Wainscot Pond. When you're looking at the work, it's quite magnificent when you're looking at the sky and the scenes, uh, the way she handles the brush stroke, all of the different elements that she's able to put together in each individual painting. On the wall that we've just looking at, we have three different versions of Wainscot Pond in different seasons. We have the spring, the summer, and then the winter. It's quite amazing when we asked her how many times she's done this, and she's probably said over 3,000 times. What's wonderful is that she said that she's never tired of doing this individual scene. It's something that inspires her constantly. Cornelia Foss began painting here on the East End when abstract expressionism ruled. She, along with her fellow painters, Robert Dash, Fairfield Porter, Jane Wilson, and Jane Freiliger, all really spearheaded the landscape movement and the figurative movement at that time. It's interesting because we note that the two different groups really did not intermingle. They intermingled at parties, but they really each were in separate camps and really uh, wanted to express their own individual style of work and really promote that extensively. When we talk about the work, we look at the sky and the way it's been rendered. We look at the way the fields have been done, the high horizon lines, and the wonderful brush strokes that she has used. In these particular ones, she has a wonderful border all the way around. And when we asked her why she decided to do the borders on these particular paintings, she said because they were so large and that they were very difficult to work with, and she wanted someone to be able to immediately be able to put them up in her house without having to have them framed. So she was thinking practically as well. When we look at them, there's a wonderful feeling where you feel like you can walk directly into the particular painting, which I think is very, very exciting to see. Her brushstroke is very loose, very fluid, and there's a magical quality to the light that we see going on here. The idea of having a very, very high horizon line lets you walk particularly into the individual work as if you feel you can enter the grass, you can enter the middle plane, and then you could eventually enter the ocean. It's very exciting to see that the artist has been able to use the same element in all three particular paintings, capturing the different seasons. In the summertime, we have the fall, and then we also have the winter scene with the snow on the ground. It's often we don't see landscapes with snow on the ground, but Cornelia Foss is one of those artists who's able to handle it beautifully. We're standing in front of a painting called Summer Garden. It was created in 2003, and it's one of the, my most favorite paintings in this particular exhibition. The painting was originally shown at Guild Hall in an exhibition called Hampton's Gardens, and it's representing Cornelia's garden in Sagaponic. What I love about it is it's almost like a photograph where we have the edges of the flowers and the garden scene are almost like completely cut off. So it's really a snapshot of what her garden looked like. Cornelia sometimes does work from life, and she also works from photographs. In this particular case, when you're looking at it, there's so many different shades of greens fluctuating all over the canvas, making your eye move from location to location to location. I love this particular corner here where we have the flowers, an impressionistic brushstroke, something that looks like it could be put together very, very quickly, but obviously the whole composition is completely thought out. Um, it's a work that I had seen, again, in our exhibition that we had at Guild Hall. Years later, I said to Cornelia, I said, is that painting still available? And she was kind enough to donate it to Guild Hall for our 75th anniversary, and it's now part of our permanent collection. We're standing in front of a painting called Loper's Path, which was created in 2003. When you look at this painting, immediately what you're drawn to is this wonderful yellow, lemon yellow sky. It's something magical, and people are always talking about the light on the East End, and it really is quite amazing. I remember seeing paintings by a number of these landscape artists and thinking, those colors are totally unreal. I've never seen that pink or that blue or that purple in the sky or that yellow. But when you've lived out on the East End, you realize that those are colors that you do see in the sky. And it's just wonderful that the artist was able to capture that moment and time in space. So you have the wonderful washes of blue, uh, blue coming in from the under layer of the canvas. And then the rest of it is washed in this yellow light here. The yellow light is then reflected into the water here. We have a little bit of a fence going on here and some houses coming in the distance. 
What's wonderful is that when you're looking at a lot of these um, various views of the same scene over and over again, you'll notice that there might be originally no houses in the distance, then there might be one house, and then unfortunately, often later times, you'll see multiple homes uh, blotting the landscape there. But again, you can really sit back and look at this beautiful painting and feel like you can walk right into it. This painting is quite different from the other ones because we have a rather low horizon line below the center of the painting. In the other ones that we were looking at, there was a very high horizon line. Once again, you feel like you're drawn into this particular painting, but from a completely different angle, perhaps from an aerial view zooming into the area. Cornelia is very well known for her landscapes, her seascapes, her portraits, and also her city scenes. In this particular ocean view, what immediately comes to mind is this strong, intense blue sky. Again, it covers two, three quarters of the painting. It's very light and then becomes a darker hue of the ocean. And then we see a little bit of the white that's being brought in with a little bit of green to show the crest of the waves. When you're first looking at it, you're really drawn to the blue and you're drawn to the beige. You don't realize what else is in this particular painting. But there are two figures here and there is another figure that is walking on the beach below. Uh, it's almost a minimalist painting. In some of the other paintings, we can really see the brush strokes. The brush strokes are impressionistic. In this one, it's almost as if the brush strokes have been smoothed away. So you really focus on the concentration of the color and the form. So the clear sky, the ocean, the sand, and a little bit of the rippling of the, of the wave there. Once again, the low horizon line feels like you can walk right in this particular painting. You can walk on the tracks here of the dunes and walk to, and enter into the water and bathe yourself in the beautiful ocean breeze. When I was putting this exhibition together with Cornelia, I was exposed to her portraits. Portraits were something that I really was not familiar that she had done, but she's been working on portraits for the last 10 years. She started out doing portraits of her friends and her family, and there's a wonderful self-portrait of herself here and a portrait of her late husband, Lucas Foss, the conductor. She's able to capture an immediacy to these works, a spontaneity. Um, there's a connection between, of course, the people that she knows, but she says when she's doing a portrait, there's also just a connection when it's a hired portrait. It's someone that she doesn't know, a straight commission. So in that case, she has to take a photograph of the individual. She has to work on that photograph. When she's working on landscapes, she said she can work on multiple canvases at one time. When she's working on a portrait, she has to solely focus on that portrait until it is done. So when she commits to a portrait, she is in there full force. What I love about them is these are friends, her uh, relatives, um, people that she knows very, very closely. There's a wonderful portrait here of her granddaughter, Olivia. She's standing in front of the garden, Cornelia's garden, and it's a magical moment where she's staring directly out at the viewer, and really, there's sort of an innocence to the quality to it, and it's just a magical setting. Uh, friends and family, again, are all shown here. It's something that she really does enjoy doing, and something that um, she has come to late in life, but something that she is getting very, very well known for. This last section of the exhibition focuses on Central Park. Cordelia Foss has studios in Sagaponic, and she has two studios in New York. She teaches, that's a part of what she does, and she loves inspiring younger artists. She teaches on the west side, and she says she takes a taxi through the park. She tells the taxi driver to go very, very slowly because she wants to capture moments and times in her mind, but also on her camera phone. When she does this, she said that she loves to catch the fleeting light. So what we have in this particular one, these paintings that were done in 2015, is we have sort of the sun or some light. She wasn't quite sure what this particular light was, but it was coming through the density of the trees. The palette is quite different in these two paintings. They're very dark, but they're not somber paintings. It's perhaps the early winter time, and there's, the sky has sort of a blue-gray tone to it. The trees have lost all of their leaves. There's the cross-hatching of the branches, but we do see that filtered light coming in from the back. But this intense light is what draws your eye to it. What is happening there? What is going on? Your eye is completely drawn to it. In this particular one, we see a little bit of smattering of light again coming through the back area. We have the trees, we have the barks of the trees and the underlayer, but we still have light seeping through. 
Once again, Cornelia has used the border in this particular painting. And when you're thinking of this border, it's not a color that you normally would expect, that lilac -y purple color. And it's juxtaposed with the dark palette here with, again, that intense yellow light coming through and smattering all about. It's capturing a moment in time and space. And she loves her New York studio. She loves her studio out here. And she continues to work in all the different areas inspiring us.